This morning I'm continuing the message series called The Holy Spirit, Your Heavenly Helper. My goal in this series is to help you understand the Holy Spirit. It's important to know the Holy Spirit because He is your Heavenly Helper. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help you live the Christian life. And you need the Spirit if you have any hope of living the life that Jesus wants you to live. Today I want us to focus on the idea that the Holy Spirit is your guide. You know, life is filled with decisions. Little decisions, big decisions, inconsequential decisions, and life and death decisions. Should I take that new job or hang on to the job that I already have? Should I move into a new house or just stay put? Should I schedule the surgery or live with the pain? Should I have chicken for dinner or should I go for the beef? Should I respond to that email or just ignore it? Should I respond to that social media post or just let it go? Decision making can be stressful. I mean, what if I make the wrong decision? What if my decision causes more harm than good? What if my decision hurts my family and brings them pain and suffering? There is good news. The Holy Spirit is present to guide us. He can show us the right road to take and also show us how to avoid the wrong road. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. God sends His Spirit to live within us, to be our constant guide. We don't have to flip a coin. We don't have to take a 50-50 chance. And we don't have to rely upon Lady Luck. We can look to the Holy Spirit to guide us in each and every decision that we make. So if you have your Bible this morning, I invite you to open it to two places that talk about how the Holy Spirit leads us. The first is John chapter 16, verse 13, and the second is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. In John chapter 16, Jesus is talking with his disciples, and he says to them in verse 13, but when he the Spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. And then Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. As the people of Israel are making their way through the wilderness under Moses' leadership, God guides them every step of the way. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21 explains that the Spirit of the Lord goes ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and at night by a pillar of fire. Following God's guidance was very simple. If the pillar of cloud and fire move, you move with it and follow it. But if the pillar of cloud and fire stays put, you pitch your tent and you don't go anywhere. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. Can you imagine the blessings of being guided by this divine GPS system? I mean, the stress of decision-making now boils down to simply one thing. Follow the pillar. The pillar does all the thinking and all the tough decision-making for you. I mean, could it get any better? I remember some times in my life when I had to make some tough decisions. 
And these were decisions I felt I just needed to get right. And so I prayed, God, if you'll just come down from heaven and take a seat at my dinner table and tell me what to do, I'll do it. Well, God never showed up in physical form at my dinner table, but he did help me make those tough decisions. He guided me through his spirit. So how did God do that? How does God help us make decisions? And how can all of us be led by God's spirit? Well, today I want to share with you two ways to get guidance from the Holy Spirit. And number one, follow the Holy Spirit. Jesus states in John 16, 13, that the Holy Spirit will guide you. When you become a believer in Jesus Christ, God sends His Spirit to live within you. And the Spirit lives within you to teach you and to counsel you. The Spirit knows every step of your journey, including all the blessings and danger that lies ahead. He knows where you've been, and He knows where you're going. He even knows the best path to take. So let the Holy Spirit be your guide. He knows how to avoid every danger sign. He knows how to avoid every attack. He knows the safest and the fastest path to take. And He also knows the path that you need to follow so that you can reach the goal that God has placed inside your heart. Now, without the Holy Spirit's guidance, we're left to figure out life on our own. And we waste a lot of valuable time, energy, and money, and we shed a lot of unnecessary tears when we ignore Him. You see, the Holy Spirit can see what we can't see. And the Holy Spirit knows what we don't know. So if the Holy Spirit is present to lead us and guide us through life, then why don't we ask for His advice and His guidance more often than we do? Well, one reason is our impatience. We want answers right now. We don't want to wait for the Holy Spirit to show us the right path to take. Another reason is our fear. We're afraid that the Holy Spirit won't respond to our request, and that will bring even more disappointment. A further answer is our pride. We think we should be able to figure out life on our own. You know, I can do this. I can handle this. I can make my own decisions. But how many times has that attitude led us down a road that led to regret? The Holy Spirit can guide you in many ways using a variety of tools. So let me mention two ways that the Spirit can guide you today. First, the Holy Spirit gives insight from the Bible. The Holy Spirit speaks through the Word of God. He reminds you of what you read in the Bible and how it applies to your life. When you store up God's Word in your heart and in your mind, the Holy Spirit can help you remember the right verse at just the right time. The Spirit uses the Bible to guide you through your circumstances and your feelings. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. You may have had this experience. You're reading the Bible, and a particular verse seems to jump off the page and grab your attention. You know, that verse is the answer to your prayer. That verse is the answer to an important decision. That verse gives you direction about God's will for your life. Daily Bible reading is so important because the Holy Spirit gives insight from God's Word. Second, 
The Holy Spirit places ideas into your mind. He speaks to you through your own thoughts. You're praying about an important decision that you need to make, and an idea pops into your head, seemingly out of nowhere. That voice inside your head may be the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. He's whispering to you the decision that he wants you to make. The Holy Spirit spoke to the early Christians in Acts chapter 13, verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. So we need to pay attention to the inner voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to our spirit. We need to know His voice and hear it louder than any other voice in our life. We get to know the voice of God's Spirit when we spend time with Him. So we need to seek Him every single day. We need to be open to hearing from Him on all matters. We read the Bible and pray daily. We put God first in our life. And we make knowing His will our number one priority. You must listen and discern the voice of God's Spirit. But be careful not to allow your own voice to take priority over the Holy Spirit's voice. Max Lucado tells a story about a husband who tells his wife that he's going to discontinue his daily stop for donuts. The wife is quite surprised, however, when he comes home later that day with a freshly baked dozen in a box. I thought you weren't going to stop at the bakery, she says. I wasn't, he explains. But when I drove past it, I felt this nudge to go inside. So I prayed, Lord, should I buy some donuts? I'm going to circle the bakery. And if I'm supposed to buy some donuts, let there be an open parking place. Oh, and sure enough, honey, there was an open spot. Now, now, I had to drive past the bakery ten times, but eventually I found that open parking place. If you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need to seek Him. You must ask God to speak to you with the attitude that you're going to do whatever He tells you to do. Your attitude needs to be, I don't care what people think. I don't care what our culture says. I don't care what the majority of people are doing. I want to hear from God's Spirit so that I can do God's will. I want to follow the Holy Spirit. Number two, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in Ephesians 5.18, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Now, a person filled or drunk with alcohol is controlled or influenced by alcohol. The alcohol's presence and power are controlling and overriding that person's abilities and that person's actions. A DUI is a citation for driving under the influence of alcohol. And why is a DUI such a big deal? Well, because the alcohol is influencing everything the driver does behind the wheel. Reaction time... Sight and perception are altered to some degree when a person is under the influence. In a similar way, a person filled with the Holy Spirit is controlled and influenced by God's Spirit. The presence and power of God's Spirit are controlling and overriding that person's abilities and actions. 
Instead of doing life in our own power, oh, we're empowered by God's Spirit. Instead of doing life through our own wisdom, we're guided by God's Spirit. Instead of being driven by our own selfish desires, we're controlled by God's Spirit. A person filled with the Holy Spirit allows the Spirit to influence and control their actions, their decisions, their plans, and their choices. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, God sends His Spirit to live within our spirit. Once you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit enters your life to direct and influence your life. And that's why the Bible commands you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that means that you allow the Holy Spirit to control and influence your decisions and your choices. We put the Holy Spirit in charge, and we follow His leading and guidance. So here's the question. Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to control you? Or are you allowing someone else or something else to control you? The filling of the Holy Spirit means that my life is yielded to God's Spirit. I relinquish control and surrender to His control. I renounce my thinking and plans, and I seek His answer for everything. I remove myself from the center, and I put the Holy Spirit at the center. I place my life in God's hands, and I surrender to His plans for me. I allow the Holy Spirit to breathe His choices and His decisions into my life. So why don't we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us at all times? Well, sometimes we're afraid to, re to relinquish control to the Holy Spirit because we're afraid He'll ask us to do something we don't want to do. He might change our plans. He might ask us to give away some money. He might take all the fun out of life. He might take us down a road where we're going to have to experience some tough times. As one person said, I've never surrendered my life to the Holy Spirit because I'm afraid of what He might do to me. Relinquishing control is a matter of faith. It's a matter of trusting God. It's believing that if God asks me to give up something, that He's going to fill me with so much blessings that I'll never miss what He asked me to relinquish. The happiest and most content people on earth are not necessarily those who have the best the world has to offer or those who've achieved great success in their professions or those who have great positions of power and influence. No. The happiest and most content people on earth are those who've learned to obey and trust God no matter their circumstances. Have you relinquished control of your life to the Holy Spirit? Have you put the Holy Spirit in charge of your decisions and your choices? To be filled with the Holy Spirit means to leave nothing behind. Let the Holy Spirit control and influence with no strings attached. Well, I want to close the message today by giving you an illustration of what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This glass of milk represents your life. The chocolate syrup represents the Holy Spirit. Now, when you become a Christian, when you put your faith in Jesus and ask Him to come into your life as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live 
inside of you. He lives within your spirit, and He's in you. That's called the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But the filling of the Holy Spirit doesn't happen until you follow His guidance in His influence with every decision and choice that you make. And when you do that, your life begins to change. You begin to look different and act different. The Holy Spirit is now in charge of every decision in your life. You begin to look more and more like Jesus in your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. You can see more of the Holy Spirit working in your life. So let the Holy Spirit stir up some things in your life. Let Him fill you. Place Him in charge of every decision and every choice that you make. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You that the Holy Spirit not only lives within us, but when we follow His influence and follow His leading, He changes us from the inside out. He makes us look more like Jesus in our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. He gives us wisdom. He guides us every step of the way. He makes us make good decisions. We're able to make good choices because the Holy Spirit helps us. Father, may we recognize every day that the Holy Spirit is within us, but we need to put Him in charge so that He fills us and leads us down the road that You want us to take. Father, may we be filled with Your Spirit and live for Jesus every day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.